Aloha guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, I'm back with another Genie Plus video. It's actually an updates video. Last week, Disney World unveiled a new update that was gonna happen for Genie Plus this week. And I wanted to give it a few days to make sure, well, that that update was, that was it. I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything else happening behind the scenes, any more tricks to this update so I could do the best video for you guys. But first I have to mention that this update is for Disney World only. If you are thinking about Disneyland, this update is not for you. This is Disney World only. So yes, starting now, actually a couple of days ago, Disney um, unveiled a new update for Genie Plus that actually I'm not a huge fan of it, actually. I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think about this update. But we're gonna kind of dissect it a little bit because uh, I think there's kind of more to the story about this update than what it really is. But basically, the update is now. When you wake up to purchase Genie Plus, you have two choices. Your choice is to purchase a single park pass, meaning you're only gonna use Genie Plus at one park. And yes, you have to decide which that park is, right? Whether it's Animal Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, or Magic Kingdom, you're basically saying, I wanna purchase Genie Plus to use at one park. Or you have the option to purchase the multi-pass, which means you wanna use Genie Plus at more than one park in that single day. Now in the fine print, it does say for this option, you do have to have the park hopper option added to your ticket, whether you're an AP or it's added to your Disney vacation package. Um, it does kind of say that you can't purchase the multi-park if you don't have the hopper pass. But yes, those are your two options. You're purchasing it for a single park or you're purchasing it for multiple parks. So. The question I keep asking myself is why? Why do we have to deal with this change that I actually find to be kind of unfriendly? We're gonna get into that, but first I'm just really confused on why this update. Disney came out a few months ago and I did post it in my video. The Disney said, you know what, for 2024, we are gonna make plans. We're trying to figure out how we're gonna make Genie Plus easier, more user friendly, and hopefully allow guests to be on their phones a little less while at the park during their park day. Meaning I was hoping this would mean we can purchase Genie Plus way in advance. And I was hoping it would mean, you know, we don't have to get all of our ride passes every hour upon the hour or whatever the situation is while we're at the theme park. That was the update I was hoping for. That is not what we got. But yeah, I am all about easier, more user friendly, and less using my phone while at the theme park. So yeah, that part sounded good. Then Disney announced starting uh, 2024, actually January 9th, 2024, uh, people with regular you know, park tickets or Disney vacation packages with tickets, you will not need to make park pass reservations. Again, great, absolutely love that update. But then they roll out this. Now, hear me out here. First, you still have to purchase Genie Plus on that day. From somewhere between midnight at 7 a.m., you have to get up on each and every park day, go on your app, and purchase Genie Plus. And second, prices are still date-based, meaning the price today might not be the price tomorrow. In fact, the prices are gonna go way up during peak or holiday season, you know, when the parks are super crowded. So it's not a set price. I still have to get up early. And now I have to choose right then and there, I have to choose which park I'm gonna use Genie Plus at or I need to decide if I want to use Genie Plus at multiple parks. Now this is when I find it not really specifically hopper friendly, right? So a couple of notes about this, right? When choosing that single park and deciding between Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and blah, 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 you are paying a certain price for that park. And yes, some parks are cheaper than others. And I think this is where the perk is at. Also, here's my thought on this. 
if I am paying the cheaper cost for Animal Kingdom, but the more expensive cost for Magic Kingdom and kind of the middle cost for Epcot and Hollywood Studios, and I'm going for a full week, like the majority of guests go to Disney World for about a week, by the time I add up all those costs and divide it by how many park days I went to, am I still just paying regular Genie Plus prices? So I kind of feel like this is only a perk for one situation and we're going to talk about it. My other note on this is by waking up and deciding which park I need to purchase my pass for, isn't that in a way making park pass reservations? Right? So in 2023, right now, I'm going to purchase the park I have a park pass reservation for, right? So if I'm already going to Animal Kingdom, I'm not going to purchase the Magic Kingdom Genie Plus. I'm going to purchase the Animal Kingdom Genie Plus. But in 2024, I don't have to make park pass reservations, which means somewhere between midnight and 7 a.m. I have to know in advance if I want to purchase Genie Plus for Animal Kingdom or Epcot or Magic Kingdom. And I need to know in advance if I'm gonna hop. This kind of, to me, takes the flexibility out of everything. So to me, this update almost made things harder. Again, Disney said they wanna make Genie Plus easier. To me, this feels harder. But again, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going, we're gonna talk about it. So to me, this is where the perk is at. The perk is Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom is way cheaper to get a Genie Plus Pass for than all the other parks. But this makes sense because Animal Kingdom has less rides or attractions that you can use Genie Plus for to skip the line than say Magic Kingdom. So if they're gonna do this park-based pricing, it does make sense that Animal Kingdom would be cheaper than Magic Kingdom. Also, there's a whole slew of people who say you don't need Genie Plus for Animal Kingdom. So there is a chance that Disney's trying to make money here because they're trying to convince those people who haven't been purchasing Genie Plus for Animal Kingdom to possibly purchase it now because it's gonna be cheaper. It's cheaper than going to Magic Kingdom. And the same thing is for Epcot. Epcot is a little bit more than Animal Kingdom. Again, the prices are up here, but it's way cheaper than Magic Kingdom. And this is where the issue is for me. The issue for me is regarding hopping. Someone with a hopper pass, whether you add uh, park hoppers to your, you know, your tickets, to your Disney vacation package, or you're an AP, just because we added hopping capabilities doesn't mean we're actually gonna hop every single day. The point of hopping is to have that flexibility to decide in the moment, yes, we wanna hop to start at one park in the morning and possibly hop later on for dinner and fireworks. But now they're adding a little kink into it because now I have to decide by 7 a.m. if I'm hopping or not because it changes if whether I'm gonna buy a single park pass or a multi-park pass. And so that again, that takes away the flexibility, the spontaneity out of it because by 7 a.m. I need to know what I'm doing. And I don't always know what I'm doing. Sometimes we kind of just, live in the moment, we seize the day. So now I don't know if I have to pay more money and purchase the multi-pass for every single day so I can have that flexibility, or if I need to Uber start planning my minute to minute out on my schedule here so that I know ahead of time if I'm most definitely hopping or not. Now again, you can hop all you want if you have the hopper capabilities. The point here is if you plan on using Genie Plus, to hop with because you can always have hopper tickets but purchase to only use Genie Plus at a single park. It's if you plan on using Genie, Genie Plus for that second, third, or fourth park depending on how many parks you're hopping to. You can always have the pass and actually hop and just not purchase the Genie Plus portion to hop at all parks. It just makes it so much more confusing. It just, ugh. And of course the multi-park pass is more money, right? Of course it is because we're using Genie Plus at more parks. But just because I'm using Genie Plus at more parks doesn't mean I'm getting more rides. So that kind of gets me a little bit. And also the multi-park uh, pass is the same price as Magic Kingdom. Now this is how Disney gets you. The majority of people who can't get park pass reservations for Magic Kingdom will start at say Epcot or Animal Kingdom and then hop to Magic Kingdom. So whether you're going to Magic Kingdom as a single park day 
or as a hopping park day, you're still purchasing the most expensive Genie Plus if you plan on using Genie Plus at Magic Kingdom. So this is why I'm not really sure this update is helpful or beneficial or makes anything easier to be honest with you because unless it's 2023 and you already know you're only going to a single park, that might be some benefit, especially if you're gonna to go to Animal Kingdom or Epcot where the passes are cheaper. But once we get into 2024, it kind of takes away that flexibility, not to mention it, it affects those of us who wanna hop. It means we have to figure out in advance what we're doing, how we're doing it, and if we wanna use Genie Plus at all the parks. But again, the perk here is Animal Kingdom, and I feel like Disney knows this. Disney's not stupid. Animal Kingdom is cheapest. When you purchase a single day park ticket, Animal Kingdom is cheaper than Magic Kingdom. If you wanna purchase Genie Plus for Animal Kingdom, it's cheaper than Magic Kingdom. This is kind of something we already know. However, Animal Kingdom, although the cheapest, also tends to be a half day park. Now we don't have to argue whether it is or it isn't. Sometimes we go for all day and sometimes we hop. But Disney knows this, a lot of people will go to Animal Kingdom, have, you know, enjoy the animals and the rides and whatnot, and around dinner time, they'll hop to somewhere else, most likely to Magic Kingdom. Why? Fireworks. There are no fireworks at Animal Kingdom, so people will hop to Magic Kingdom to watch those fireworks, especially if they couldn't get park pass reservations for Magic Kingdom, they'll start at Animal, and they'll hop to magic. Well, Disney knows this. If you wanna use Genie Plus for that Magic Kingdom or for that hopping capability, you're still paying more money on these Genie Plus update passes. I'm hoping I haven't lost you. In the end, this is my confusion. Are you ready for it? Disney removed this and that capabilities due to the fact that Genie Plus was just too popular. Lightning lanes were getting too long and congested and so G D Disney had to pull back. Disney had to say, we couldn't purchase in advance. We're gonna raise the price. We're gonna make this more difficult or more expensive for you, hoping less people purchase because it's just gotten too popular, right? Disney, this, this has been the history of Genie Plus. What are they trying to just to do here? Like, what is the point? Again, I'm back to my, why are they doing this? Are they just trying to even out the herd by making Animal Kingdom less? Are they trying to reduce hopping? Like I said, it does make park hopping a little bit more difficult. Are they just trying to reduce the flood of people that head over to Magic Kingdom in the evenings for fireworks? And I'm really not sure how this is all gonna work or even if it's gonna work, right? As I said before, Animal Kingdom is already the cheaper park. Magic Kingdom, although the busiest park, is also the highest priced park when you go with those single day tickets. And you know, Hollywood Studios is second close. So by making Animal Kingdom cheaper on all accounts and by making the Genie Plus hopping situation a little bit more difficult, is this finally solving the problem regarding Genie Plus? I'm gonna go with no. If you think about it, most people purchase multi-day tickets, right? Most families, whether you're staying on property or off property, you're purchasing multiple days. You're going for a week. You're going for four park days, five park days, whatever. So when you do that, it really doesn't matter that Animal Kingdom is the cheapest because we're paying for a bulk price to be able to go to whatever parks we want to. So we could take that five day park pass and go to Magic Kingdom all five days if we want to. So now really the only factor is the cost of Genie Plus. And if you saw the numbers, the difference between Animal Kingdom and Magic Kingdom is a difference of like 10 bucks. So if you're a family of four, is it really that much of a savings to go to Animal Kingdom over Magic Kingdom for 40 bucks? And it's for these reasons that I'm really not sure this is gonna work, that it's really gonna solve the problem, right? Unless Disney's point of all this was just to make Genie Plus more beneficial at Animal Kingdom, thus reducing the cost. I don't know guys, you let me know in the comments what you think the whole point of all of this was, you know, the why of it all. 
But whatever the reason, as you guys can tell, I'm not totally a fan of this uh, change, especially for people who want to hop. And of course, for 2024, you're going to 100% need to know which park you're going to, which kind of is like a park pass reservation, or you need to decide if you're hopping, which like I said, is the part that makes it more difficult. Although, if you already have, you know, dining reservations, that kind of takes a little bit of the decision making out of that for you. But again, it kind of reduces the flexibility of being able to hop wherever you want and go to whatever park you want since we do have to purchase the correct Genie Plus per the park, per our situation. Ugh. Anyway, guys, what do you say? What do you think of this change? Are you happy about it just for the fact that you get to save money at Animal Kingdom? Or are you like me and you're just like really confused on the why of all of this? Like what was the point, Disney? What was the point of making this a little bit harder and a little bit more difficult for those who hop? So that's it, guys. That's the big update. The huge benefit here are for those of you who are going to Animal Kingdom, just one park in a single day and maybe even Epcot. But yeah, that's it. Now, starting now, when you go to purchase Genie Plus, you have to decide what park you go into or do you plan on hopping? Again, this is for the purpose of using Genie Plus. This is for the purpose of skipping the line at those said parks. Disney is saying, do you wanna skip the line at Magic Kingdom? Buy the Magic Kingdom Pass. Do you wanna skip the line at Animal Kingdom? Buy the Animal Kingdom Pass. Do you wanna skip the line at more than one park in one given day? Buy the multi-park pass. And yeah, it doesn't seem to matter what park pass reservation you have because I was able to book passes while in my bed at home without any sort of park pass reservation. So yes, none of those other things seem to have changed. It just purely seems to be what I said it was. So anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you think of this update. Let me know what you think is going to be, you know, what the future might hold for Genie Plus. Like I said, I was hopeful they were going to finally make it more user friendly. <laughs> I'm not sure this change does that, but let me know if you disagree. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. As always, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so. If the button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications. I like this video. And again, comment. Are you a fan of the change or not so much? Again, I think it's super easy for those of you who know what you want, know what you're doing, and you don't plan on hopping. I think it's a little bit more difficult for people who want that flexibility, who don't want to have to decide at midnight or even 7 a.m. verbatim what they're doing, when and why and how and all those things, right? So, yep, that's it, guys. Let me know in the comments. But as always, mahalo for watching. Nina, out. Bye, guys. Oh.